Today in our 2017 Nissan LEAF, we're going to take a look at and show you how to install the Curt Custom Fit Class 1 Trailer Hitch Receiver. Part number is 11396. Here's what our hitch is going to look like installed on the LEAF. As you can see, you're not adding a whole lot to the rear of the vehicle. We don't have cross tubes or anything like that. Those are all hidden behind the fascia. Just going to have our receiver tube opening and our safety chain connection points, all that are really going to be visible. You'll see the nice reinforcement collar around the end of our inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter receiver tube opening. This is a class one hitch, so it's going to work out for your smaller cargo carriers, your two bike racks, or your small utility trailers. You want to be sure to use class one rated accessories. And to secure those items in place, we'll use the half inch diameter pinhole. There's a good amount of room around there, so whether you're using a pin and clip, a locking hitch pin maybe, or an anti-rattle device, you should have enough room to get in there and operate that. The safety chain connection points are going to be a small, rounded, stock steel type material. There's a good amount of room there. You shouldn't have any problem getting safety chains connected from any trailer that you'd want to haul with your leaf. Now when it comes time to use your hitch, we've got a couple weight limits. We're going to have a 150 pound tongue weight rating, so that's the maximum downward force we can put at our receiver tube opening. And we've got a 1,500 pound gross trailer weight rating. That would be the total weight of our trailer and then anything we were to load up on it. Of course, you need to check the owner's manual on the LEAF too. You want to see what it's rated for and go off of whichever of those numbers are the lowest. Kurt also recommends the use of a stabilization strap with this hitch when you're hauling a non-wheeled load. So your cargo carriers, your bike racks, really anything other than a trailer, they recommend you use the stabilization strap part number 18050. Now a couple measurements that you'll find helpful when selecting your bike rack or hitch cargo carrier will be from the ground to the inside top edge of the receiver tube opening, we've got about 12 inches. Then from the center of our hitch pin hole to the outermost edge of our bumper, it's about five. We would recommend the use of items with a raised shank to promote better ground clearance at the rear. Now to begin our installation, we're gonna need to remove this panel. We're gonna reinstall it later, but we'll just go through it. We'll start by taking out the fasteners. You see we've got Several here, these are going to use a 10 millimeter socket. We'll get those pulled down. Once we've got those off the back side, there's going to be one right up here in the middle in the front. You see, that's just going to be a nut right up there on the stud. Now on the back side here, we've also got two push pin fasteners. So use like a pick or a screwdriver. You just want to pop the middle portion out, then that outer portion will come. Then up here on the front corner, you got the same style fastener. And then there's one in just about the same spot on the opposite corner. Pull that down, kind of towards the front of the car to release it. Now we're going to remove the bolts that are holding our tie down loop or our tow hook. There'll be two on the bottom and one or two on the side. Now we're going to mock our hitch into position. We're going to have to mark the whole location over on our driver's side. We're going to use the existing hardware and those are going to go right into the same holes that we just pulled our our tie down loop out of. Just using the exact same bolts, I'm just going to thread those back in. All right, now here on the driver's side, see our forward hole here lines up okay, but there's no existing hole here, so we need to mark this location. We need to get our hole drilled right in the middle. Right, so mark right in the middle and also in the middle from side to side. Now we'll pull our hitch down and get that drill. Now we'll just use a center punch. We're going to mark that whole location. We'll get our holes drilled out. I'm going to start with a smaller bit just to make a pilot hole and then we'll enlarge it up to the 7 16 diameter we need. After we've done that, just a little bit of 
spray paint or undercoating on that hole is a good idea. Prevent any rust from occurring. Now we'll need to enlarge this hole, the hole just in front of that, closer to the front of the vehicle, so we can get our spacer block and our bolt in there. See, that's the head of the bolt that we'll need to get to pass through there. And there's our spacer block, so that's gonna give us a good point to start. Now you can use a smaller file to get in here if you want. I'm gonna use a cutoff wheel, also a carbide bit you can use, or even just drill a couple of larger holes right there beside it if you want to. See, once that passes through, we'll touch this up as well. Make sure we don't have any exposed steel. Now we'll use our coiled pull wire. We'll go up in the hole that we created. And we'll come down through the hole that we just enlarged. We'll slide our square hole spacer block on. Thread on our carriage bolt. Feed these up in separately. Bring it right down through our hole. Then we'll do the reverse pull wire method for the forward attachment point. So spacer block's going to go on, bolt's going to be threaded on, then our bolt's going to go in the frame rail, then our spacer block, and we'll draw that down through. Now you can use the fish wires to guide the bolts down through your hitch, or you can remove them. I prefer to remove them, but if you've got any worries about pushing those back up in the frame, just leave them there. Now we're going to get our hitch put back up in position, just like we did down here. We're going to use the original bolts. Once those are started, we'll grab our flange nuts, and we want to bring our bolts right down through and place our flange nuts on. Now we get these snug down. Once we've got all four snug, we're going to go through and torque them down to the specifications that are listed in our instructions. Now to get our underbody panel back in place, we're going to have to strip trim out a small area here in the middle. The best thing for you to look at is going to be this little tab that sticks up here. From this corner edge, we want to go in three inches. Do that on both sides. And then from about a quarter inch in on that edge, we're going to come over to about the four inch mark here. Now this is a little bigger than what the instructions call for but it's gonna give us plenty of room. We won't have to worry about re-trimming it. So just kind of square that up. Now this material is pretty thin, so the utility knife's usually all you're gonna need. Now we'll start working our panel back in. You can see kind of where everything lines up here. Guide it up and over. Have to flex it in a little bit to tuck the corner here. Now the one nut that we had here on the front side, I'm going to loosely install that now just to hold the cover up in position. We'll just need to kind of go around and make sure everything's lined up properly. Now we'll line up our fasteners going around the edge. I'm going to get those resecured. With our panel back in place, that's going to complete our installation of the Kurt Custom Fit Class 1 Trailer Hitch Receiver, part number C11396 on our 2017 Nissan LEAF. Click the link below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com.